Ini Inis aku lights camera action. No. Ay, pati kasi tanya. Hey mga doc, a lot of you watching this channel have already started their online classes, so I wish you the best of luck for this school year. This video has been requested a few times already in the comment section, so thank you for that. Today we're going to be talking about how I survived first year in medicine in the problem-based learning program 1. So I highly encourage you watch the video first where I shared what goes on or what to expect in a PBL1 program so that somewhat you can understand why I do this or that whenever I'm studying. If we haven't met yet, my name is Grace Nariza. I'm an incoming second year med student in Cebu, Philippines. Without further ado, let's get to it. different preferences or strategy or types of studying so this vlog is something more personal so I'm not gonna do it into a tips or trick something I'm just gonna be sharing with you how I do it there is absolutely no standard as to the perfect studying method so you do you okay so schedule for studying comparing my schedule for studying back in pharmacy and the board exam I could say a lot has changed some changes were natural while the other changes were actually a conscious effort and if you have watched my PBL video, you would know that some days after... <laughs> if you have watched the PBL video, you would know that some days we only stay in the school for a half day. Before COVID happened, I usually take a quick lunch with my friends, then take a nap, and then head to the books. Usually I stay in the library if I have to wait for my brother to finish with his class at 4.30. Pick him up and then head home around 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. And then the rest of the night would be going back to studying. I usually try to make it my goal to finish by 12 midnight. But I'm only human. Sometimes I do get distracted and take very long breaks than I intend to. So what happened is I extend my study period to around 2 a.m. or 3 a.m. As long as I finish my goal. But some days you just can't have it all. You don't get to finish your goal. You stay up late and you feel unproductive and guilty. So that's reality. So yeah, speaking of goals, if you watch the day in my life video, you would see that I write goals on the day I have to finish those goals. I tend to not write the whole study references I plan to read the whole week to avoid one, feeling frustrated if I don't follow them because I usually can't follow them. And two, it's just to avoid me being complacent na, ah, I already got it all planned, everything is so chill. It's not. It's not gonna be so chill because no matter how much you read, it feels like you still don't know everything you have to know. Feeling is inadequacy. So okay, we usually have our exams or written exams on Monday. So what we do, my friends and I usually do, is that after our Friday class or practical exam, which happens around Friday, we take the afternoon until the evening off. So that's our nomad night or nomad period. And then Saturday and Sundays are intended for reviewing or preparing for the exam or catching up on our backlogs. We all have backlogs. That's reality. Since I would be studying for longer hours during Saturday and Sunday, and staying at home somewhat makes me easily bored since I've been staying at home if it's weekdays, I usually wake up earlier and then go to Coffee Bean and Tea Leaf or coffee bean scent. If you're from Cebu City, Philippines, maybe we do see each other or maybe we could see each other once this whole COVID thing blew over. Or better yet, if you do study in CBTL or coffee bean and tea leaf, tell me your favorite branch because I know we all have our favorite branch. Okay, so do I have time for extracurricular activities? I've mentioned earlier in this video that some changes actually come naturally like extending your studying hours for it to be longer compared to your undergrad schedule. Uh, trying to be more disciplined in terms of finishing your goals or your reading list. However, some changes require conscious effort. This may include joining organizations or taking the extra time to take care of yourself, your mental health and physical health, like exercising, you know, those things. A brief background, during high school and undergrad, I was very into extracurricular activities like this. Maybe I would be playing badminton TTH, or we do have trainings TTH during high school, or I would be joining uh, school organizations, which you would know it does take too much of your time. So I somewhat made this unrealistic plan that in med school or in medicine, I will not be distracted, I will only prioritize my studies alone, 
no other thing in mind. Medicine lang, mahalang tuition, kaya to. So, I did that for one semester. And after that one semester, I slowly realized that it's just not me, nor is it realistic. I realized that those distractions are actually my way of taking the time off or doing something I enjoy. So, I made a promise to myself na, Okay, Grace, since you enjoy those things and you're now in medicine, show me na you can do it or show me that your grades are good for the first two semesters. And... Being the person I am, that challenged me. And here we are, two semesters later. I recently joined a non-profit medical school organization. I am now doing YouTube for fun. And I take the conscious effort to take a break or try my best to exercise at least three times a week. Kahit man lang 30 minutes, kahit walking lang yan, at least do something to get me out of my bum. Another good example of being yourself or, you know, not losing what makes you you are my friends who went back and pick up their old hobbies or develop new ones like journaling, um, graphic design, bike links, bike links, oh, embroidery, and a lot more. So, iniisip na lang namin na we'd rather spend our energy or extra time doing this stuff that we enjoy or that is good for our mental health instead of scrolling through social media, which we also do, pero at least not as much. So, I think the takeaway from that story is... Prioritize stabilizing yourself first once you test the waters in medicine and then once you get the hang of it, once your schedule, your study habit, or your grades are up to your standard, slowly insert things that you enjoy doing. Tsaka isipin mo din na you don't want to be a doctor and be an unhealthy one. Healthy is wealth. The advantage of listening and expressing what you're what you're passionate about even outside medicine is that one you don't feel suppressed or you're not that easily burned out kasi na enjoy mo yung process hindi mo na feel na i used to be so fun and now i'm boring or parang i used to have this drive in me and now it's gone so that's one and two you learn how to manage your time more efficiently and now that i think of it in the real world Hindi lang naman medicine ata yung buhay natin. God willing, maybe you would have a business in the future or a family in the future and other things that might take a chunk of your time aside from practicing medicine. So, as early as now or even if nasa high school ka pa or nasa pre-med ka pa, you could actually now practice time management, you know. Okay, so how I study the subject. If you've been here long enough, you would notice that most of my videos like this, yung mga sit-down videos ko, I usually take it with my white background behind me, but for today, we're gonna be trying a different one. Today's gonna be different because I'm actually gonna show you my study materials or how I study by subject. Again, this is not the gold standard of studying. You do what works for you. I have friends who make their own notes. I have friends who read the book alone. Wala nang notes note. Wala nang notes note. It's all up to you, but I'm just gonna share what's mine just in case it helps you. <laughs> so first, I'd like to show you an old schedule and how I use it as a checklist for the subjects or reference I have to study. Aside from this, I have a separate list uh, reference, pero this is like my checklist lang na I have studied this, I've studied this, like that, like that. Okay, so this is our schedule for fourth by online classes last semester. And as you can see here, I have my legends. So first read is pink. And then ideally, I would have done my first read before our SGD session or before the lecture on that topic. And then I would mark it light blue if I've listened well in the correlate or I've understand the correlate well or I've read it for the second time already. And then very seldomly, which you can see, there is no green in this schedule, is that I've read it three times. I've somewhat, you know, implanted it well enough. Or sometimes maybe I have read it for the third time, pero I don't change it now. I don't go back to this checklist and then change the color of the highlighter. You know what? I'm not so sure. And of course, our favorite guess for medicine. Red stands for backlog. But that's the concept. It helps if my checklist ka or tracker ka ng how many times have you read this topic? Did you understand this topic well enough for the exam? Parang ganun. So that's the thought behind it. 
I mean, let's be honest here. We all have backlogs. Now, we have four first-year subjects. Five, actually, if you count neuroanatomy separately. So, I'm gonna tackle how I study for these subjects. Oh, by the way, back in first year, I bought the big books. Pero, I'm slowly transitioning to digital na para, you know, I could save more in terms of buying books. Anatomy and histology for me are term and graphic heavy subjects. So for me, there is more memorization than concepts to be internalized. So what I try to do is I try to memorize how it looks like and then I correlate or integrate it to why it looks like that. It's like this. So you would see here, if you try to study uh, a table comparing your jejunum and your ilium, you would actually see that it says here it's deeper the jejun the jejun jeje. Oh, the jejunum is uh, has a deeper red color and thick and heavy wall and greater vascularity. So I try to correlate it with each other para hindi ko makalimutan na why is it deeper red because it has greater vascularity. Why does it have greater vascularity? Maybe because it supplies a thicker or greater a thicker or heavier wall in comparison to your ilium which it says here it's paler pink it has thin and light color and has lesser vascularity parang ganun. so that's the example so anatomy and histology since it's more graphic and more memorization based you know those parts that you're already tired or you can no longer understand the biochemical illustrations with a different process and when i'm tired of that yes i shift to anatomy or, or histology because parang oh pictures let's see how many tunica is here how many layers of muscle is here what is the direction of the muscles or what does this muscle do what does this muscle do so my movement compared to biochemistry and physiology so my usual study materials or study setup if i'm studying anatomy or and histology is that i have a book or the reference book in here which is morse for anatomy paulina and ross for histology and then th there could be hand-me-down notes here hand-me-down notes are usually my backbone notes and then as i go through the material i insert those notes sa backbone note. Usually, it's in digital form for third and fourth buy because I've mentioned I'm slowly transitioning but in first and second buy, if I'm being honest, I'm used to, you know, paper and printouts back in undergrad. So, I didn't want to shift drastically. So, if you're used to paper, like actual hard copy, do not drastically change your study habits. Unahin na muna yung schedule at na yung mga materials slowly by slowly. So after I go through the reference and have inserted my side notes, the hand-me-down notes would then be where I do my second read and third read, if possible. An example here is a urinary system histology hand-me-down notes. I usually highlight things that I think are important and then insert side notes if my nami mention sa lectures or correlates and then I read it side by side with the reference book. Tapos, ano? Actually, hindi ko kailala sino gumawa ng handout na to. If you're watching this video, thank you. You saved me a lot of time. And yeah, this is an example of a backbone notes which I turn into my personal note. Ayan, there's those are my side notes. Red and blue para standing out. Sometimes I do add from the book. So that's it for histology and anatomy, which are more on memorization, which if I'm being honest, I'm not that good with memorization. I use a lot of mnemonics or I correlate them para, you know, it's easier to memorize because I'm not that good. I don't have the best memorization skills in this planet. Since my pre-med was pharma, I'm pretty familiar with biochemistry compared to the other subjects because it was a part of our board exam. Anyway, for biochemistry, our reference book is Harper's Illustrated Biochemistry. So what I do is I insert the side notes on the illustration itself so that way during my second and third read if possible, <laughs> it's easier for me to pinpoint now, oh, okay, so this, this is the first product or this is the written step or this is where this is so brown specific now this step is where it happens this step might insert you pathogenesis this step this will be healed so it's easier to remember if you remember the illustration than the terms themselves so i'm gonna show you an example here's an illustration for biosynthesis of estrogen i also have 
formation and hydroxylation of vitamin D3. See, makikita mo, it all starts here. 7 dehydro cholesterol. There is an age-related loss in it. And then there is a photolysis because of sunlight on the skin. At what layer? At Pulsigian layer of epidermis. And this increases in intensity of exposure and is inversely related with skin pigmentation. It becomes a pre-vitamin D3, becomes v vitamin D3, which will be needing vitamin D3 BP by name protein. And then this will happen, 25 hydroxylation happens in the endoplasmic reticulum, for, which is now C, first obligatory reaction, which is not regulated. <sighs> okay. So that way, I would not have to go through the paragraph ulit for biochemistry. I just studied the illustration. For physiology, I do a similar thing where I summarize it. But I do not have the time to start from scratch. So what I do is, if there's an illustration, I usually insert side notes on the illustration and since physiology is more on paragraphs compared to harper's or biochemistry i summarize the paragraph into one sticky note that way again it's a lot more faster to read it again compared to reading the whole chapter by paragraph and it sticks more easily now oh yeah i summarized this this way in a way i'm making my own notes but i'm using the illustrations of the book you can do that digitally if you want to make your own notes Okay, so if I'm about to read a very foreign topic or topics which I have less interest or drive to study, or maybe if I'm already reading the material and then I, won't, I don't understand it thoroughly, so what I do is I do tap YouTube channels to have a brief overview of a certain topic. So the channels I found helpful in giving me a brief overview were Ninja Nerd Lectures, AK Lectures, free Lectorio videos because I don't have a premium account. Lectorio! Baka naman. I also watch Khan Academy but not as much. And UBC Medicine Educational Media, they've done a good job in showing the neuroanatomy. Which helped a lot because our neuroanatomy unit was hit by the pandemic and we did not get to touch our cadavers, brainstem, and spinal cord. This may serve as your short lecture before studying. So that brings us to the end of my personal take regarding how I studied for my first year in medicine, how I inserted extracurricular activities, and my take on mental health or taking care of yourself. I genuinely hope you like this video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know what type of videos you want to see next. But until then, see you in the next vid, mga doc. Where's my recorder? Got it. Not be the quid on iPod. No, not my iPod. Ski. Ski. Prove me wrong. Yeah. Okay, I think I, I, I know where it is. Kuya Karun Jun, take it out. What's it? Teach me, but teach me. This time. I'm not going to get it. Shut up! There, I'm not sure. Sige, sige, never mind. Sige na, sige na. I'm sure na makarep. Oh, it didn't end.